Thank you for tuning in. Yes, I did finally pull the trigger on a solo. So far with the solo, I've been very impressed. I love having access to Pixhawk. As you guys know, I've been an APM Pixhawk fan for many years now, and all of that's packed into this nice frame. You have the ability to flip into all those flight modes. What I want to do starting now is document the process of getting drone pan compatible with this solo. Drone Pan, if you're not aware, runs on the Phantom and Inspire 1. We have about 5,000 installs and the feedback has been great, but many of you have asked about support for the Solo, being able to do 360 degree aerial panoramas. And so what I wanted to do is just walk through the process over time of getting involved with Drone Kit, writing it for Android, and ultimately making the code open source, putting it out there so others can benefit. And so over the weekend, I had a fair amount of time to experiment with Drone Kit. They have it available for Python, for Android. I'm ultimately working with Android right now and want to demonstrate the process that I went through to get up and running and show you a field test of this yawing every 60 degrees. And what we'll do next is get the gimbal on, GoPro, and all of that. And let me go ahead and dive into my initial experience with Drone Kit and show you guys the test at the field. Now previously I did a video that showed how to set up software in the loop, compile the APM code base and run it under Vagrant, but DroneKit software in the loop makes it super simple. Now this part of the video is going to go into a lot of technical detail. I won't be able to cover all bases, but if you guys have any questions, feel free to post them below and I'll do my best to get around to them. So what we want to do is run the Python package installer that's called pip and we're going to install drone kit so I'll just copy that command and now you'll see that it will tell me that I already have drone kit installed. So next thing I'll do is let's just run drone kit software in the loop and I'll list the different firmwares that we can run. Now in this case I'll run solo. Copter is, is fairly similar. Solo obviously has some different extensions and capabilities. But let me show you, if you just run drone kit, SITL, you can see our different options. And what I'll do is I'll run solo, it's 1.2.0, and then I'll also pass it a home location. So what this will do is it will start up the software simulator with my home location. Let me just add a note that the simulator is running waiting for connections and from my experience in the world of DJI and doing development the way you run a simulator with the Phantom or the Inspire 1 is you have to have your physical aircraft plugged into your computer to run the simulator so in the world of DJI development you have to make that hardware purchase before you do any development in drone kit you can see that even without any hardware we can run this so that's just a side note I think it's pretty awesome that we can do this. As I discussed in my previous demonstration of setting up software in the loop with the APM firmware, I showed how to install Mab Proxy. Now this is pretty important because what Mab Proxy will do is it will connect to the simulator on this port 5760 and it will serve as a proxy to send information to and from different ground stations. So it's really cool. I'm going to show that here in a minute. So what we'll do is I'm going to open up a new tab and I'll run this rather long and intimidating command. But what you'll see here is Map Proxy says let's connect to the simulator. This is running locally on that port that I just showed you. And what I'll do next is I will forward this information to another port 5761 on my local machine. You'll see this IP right here is going to be a tablet of mine running tower and this will actually be another computer on my network running mission planner. So pretty cool that this one command will then allow us to send information to these various devices. Okay, so let me demonstrate what's going on here. We have software in the loop from DroneKit over here. We have Tower running on the Android device. This is where I'm actually doing the drone pan development, and I'll show that here in a few. And then we have Mission Planner running over here. So our map proxy command that I showed you is basically forwarding 
information to these different devices wirelessly over the IP network. And let me just demonstrate that within the Tower app, you need to make sure you go into your settings and set your connection type to UDP. So that's done. I'm going to go out to flight data and then let's try connecting. Connected. Okay, you see we're connected in stabilized mode. That's the telemetry coming from the drone kit package off of my Mac. Now let me do the same with Mission Planner. We'll go up into the COM port. We'll select UDP. Packets are currently being forwarded to this device over my network. And we'll use that 14550 port, which is what we specified in Mav Proxy. You can see that it's connecting. You can see it's loading our parameters. And as I specified in the drone kit, Initialization, this is my home location. This is the field that I normally fly at. I'll go ahead and just center on our drone location, which is the solo here in the field, just like we did in Mission Planner. And lastly, this is a tower web app. It's also on GitHub with DroneKit, and it's a web version of a just very simplified ground control station, but it's pretty cool. You can see the solo icon here and the location at my home field. Now what we're going to do is we're going to arm and take off. I'll do that from the command line and I want to show how all of these ground stations update as the simulator is running. So let's just start here with the command line. I'll type mode. You'll see that we're in stabilized mode. So I'll put us in guided mode, which will be easiest okay. to test. You can hear tower on my Android device talking. So we're going to arm the throttle and then let's go ahead take off to 30 meters you can see mission planner updating that altitude now what I'll do is I'll issue a command and then we'll watch the aircraft move so I'll do fly to here and we'll just leave uh, altitude of 30 meters you can see it turn around and start heading that way. Now let me actually show you the tablet as it's moving. Battery at 70%. And as well as the web app, the Solo has moved over to its destination. Now what I'll demonstrate, this is a work in progress of drone pan. There is a yaw button here and when I press it we're going to see the Solo yaw 60 degrees six times. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll tap yaw now. You can see by the little red cursor that every five seconds it's yawing 60 degrees. And this is just a great feature to have when you're doing any sort of development. You can run DroneKit software simulator, test your code locally, and then go out to the field and validate. So now it's back where it started, which is exactly what we want. And I'll be working on adding the gimbal commands and taking photos. But let me go ahead and just demonstrate what this looks like. We'll go to the field and I'll show you that. So here we go, I'm pressing it now. There's the first yaw. It'll wait five seconds. There's the second yaw. It's doing a great job of maintaining position. There's the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Now right now there is no camera or gimbal. This is just the first test that I'm doing. So far so good with Android drone kit. I have, have A set up for manual mode, so I'll just press the A. Now I have control again. Overall, my experience with DroneKit has been very positive, incredibly open. To be honest, it's a lot easier to get up and running with DroneKit than with the DJI platform. I'll cover more of those details later, but looking forward to getting DronePan running on Android for the Solo and ultimately other Pixhawk builds. The only challenge is going to be having that gimbal control for a custom build. I know this was somewhat technical, but I wanted to share it. Hopefully some of you get interested in doing drone development and contribute to the project. I think it'll be fun to just see what we can come up with. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. And until next time, 
Thanks for watching.